Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, O Comforter of the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasure of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities, O Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is risen, brethren. Today is May 21st, 2020. I am reading from the prologue of Ochrid, Volume 1. Today we'll be reading the stories of saints, the holy equal to the apostles, Emperor Constantine, and Empress Helen, his mother, and the venerable martyr, Pacomius. The holy equals to the apostles, Emperor Constantine, and Empress Helen, his mother, 327 AD. Constantine's parents were Emperor Constantius, Chlorus, and Empress Helena. Chlorus had other children by another wife, but from Helena he had only Constantine. After his coronation, Constantine fought three great battles, the first against Maxentius, a Roman tyrant, the second against the Scythians on the Danube, and the third against the Byzantines. Before the battle with Maxentius, while Constantine was greatly concerned and doubtful of his success, a brilliant cross appeared to him in the sky, during the day adorned with stars. Written on the cross were the words, By this sign conquer. Astonished, the emperor ordered a large cross to be forged, like the one that had appeared, and that it be carried before the army into battle. By the power of the cross he achieved a glorious victory over the enemy, which was greatly superior in number. Maxentius drowned in the Tiber River, Immediately after this, in the year 313 AD, Constantine issued the famous Edict of Milan to halt the persecution of Christians. Defeating the Byzantines, Constantine built a beautiful capital on the Bosphorus, which from that time was called Constantinople. Before this, however, Constantine fell ill with the dreaded disease of leprosy. As a cure, the pagan priests and physicians counseled him to bathe in the blood of slaughtered children. However, he rejected that. Then the apostle Peter and Paul appeared to him and told him to seek out Bishop Sylvester, who would cure him of this dreaded disease. The bishop instructed him in the Christian faith and baptized him, and the disease of leprosy vanished from the emperor's body. When the discord began in the church because of the mutinous heretic Arius, the emperor convened the first ecumenical council in Nicaea in 325 AD at which the Arian heresy was condemned and orthodoxy confirmed. Saint Helena, the pious mother of the emperor, was very zealous for the faith of Christ. She visited Jerusalem discovering the honorable cross of the Lord and built the church of the resurrection on Golgotha, as well as many other churches throughout the Holy Land. This holy woman presented herself to the Lord in her 80th year in 327 AD. Emperor Constantine outlived his mother by ten years. He reposed in Nicomedia in this 65th year in 337 AD. His body was interred in the Church of the Twelve Apostles in Constantinople. The Venerable Martyr Pacomius Pacomius was born in Little Russia. The Tartars captured him in his youth and sold him to a Turkish tanner as a slave. He spent 27 years in slavery in the town of Yusaki in Asia Minor. He was forced to become a Muslim. 
Then he went to Mount Athos, was tonsured a monk, and spent twelve years in the monastery of St. Paul. He decided to suffer for Christ. His spiritual father, the elder Joseph, accompanied him to Yusaki, where Pocomius presented himself to his former master as a Christian in the monastic habit. The Turks subjected him to torture, threw him into a prison, and beheaded him on the feast day of the Ascension, May 8th, 1730. Many miracles were wrought by his blood and relics. Pecomius was buried on the island of Patmos in the church of St. John the Theologian. Thus, this little Russian peasant became a martyr and wreath bearer in the kingdom of Christ. And also today, these saints are commemorated. Higher Martyr Secundus and those with him in Alexandria, 356 AD. St. Hospicius of Trier, 581 AD, St. Constantine Yaroslav, 1129 AD, and his children, St. Michael and Theodore, 12th century, wonder workers of Murom, St. Cyril, Bishop of Rostov, 1262 AD, St. Basil, Bishop of Ryazan, 1295 AD, St. Helen of Decani, Serbia, 1350 AD, St. Cassian, the Greek monk of Uglich, 1504 AD, monk martyr, Agapitas, founder of Markushev Monastery, Vologda, 1584 AD, uncovering of the relics, 1998, of Saint Andrew Ogorodnikov, Fool for Christ of Simbirsk, 1841 AD, Synexis of the Saints of Simbirsk, Synexis of the Saints of Ufa, Synexis of the Saints of Karelia, meeting of the Vladimir icon of the Most Holy Theotokos, 1521 AD. Hymn of Praise, Saint Constantine. To Constantine the shining cross appeared, Constantine saw it and glorified God. It was a sign from the Son of God. There is nothing more beautiful than this sign, the sign of suffering and temporal trouble, but also the sign of final victory. By this sign which worked wonders, Constantine set out and conquered everywhere. In the midst of pagan Rome, which persecuted the cross, he raised the cross on high to the glory of the Savior, that which for three centuries had been broken and cursed, now for Rome became great and holy. For three centuries the cross had been spat upon. Empires and emperors, arrogant and odious, were destroyed one by one like weak reeds, but the sign of the cross remained upright, miraculous and gloriously it shone on the world. Constantine recognized it and raised it even higher. That is why in the calendar his name is written. Reflection We see that vice is something shameful and sinful, and that it always hides and always takes upon itself the appearance of good works. St. John Chrysostom beautifully says, Vice does not have its own particular face, but borrows the face of good works. This is why the Savior said, They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Matthew 7 verse 15 Call a liar a liar, a thief a thief, a murderer a murderer, an adulterer an adulterer, a slanderer, a slanderer, and you will infuriate them. But if you want to call a man honest, honorable, unselfish, truthful, just, conscientious, you will make him light up with joy and please him. Again, I quote Christosom, Good works are something natural in man, while vice is something unnatural and false. If a man is caught in vice, he quickly justifies his vice by some good works. He clothes it in the garment of good works. Indeed, vice does not possess its own particular face. The same is true of the devil, the father of vice. Contemplation. Contemplate God, the Holy Spirit, as the inspirer of justice, peace, and joy. How he inspired with justice, peace, and joy all the lovers of Christ's justice. How he inspired, and even today inspires, with justice, peace, and joy, all the sufferers for Christ's justice. Homily on the children of God. The Spirit itself breatheth witness with our spirit. 
that we are the children of God. Romans 8, verse 16. Only he who has the Spirit of God in himself has the witness that he is a child of God. Without the Spirit of God, there is no such witness. Not even the whole universe can give this witness. The universe by itself, without the Spirit of God. What else does it witness to us other than the fact that we are its slaves, its victims, whom it unmercifully swallows? In essence, the pagans thought that also. Do not the opponents of God today think likewise? They do think so, for indeed, it is difficult to take that thought away from those who do not recognize the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the witness of heaven. The same apostle says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. Romans 8 verse 15 What is the spirit of bondage? It is every spirit except the Spirit of God, whom Christ the Lord sends to those who love Him. The spirit of bondage is the spirit of materialism, the spirit of fortune-telling, the spirit of naturalism, the spirit of pessimism, the spirit of despair, the spirit of vice. Only the Spirit of God is the all-holy spirit of adoption and freedom. Oh, what happiness! Oh, what peace! Oh, what joy when the Spirit of God nestles in the cleansed heart of man as a sparrow does in its nest. Then our hope opens hundreds of doors in the prison of the universe, and our embrace wider than the universe stretches out to the one who is greater and more merciful than the universe. To whom? To the Father. And then we cry out, Abba, Father. Romans 8 verse 15 The witness of God that comes through sight can lead us to doubt that we are the children of God. But the witness that comes to us from the heart, from the Spirit of God, does not leave even the slightest doubt. God witnesses about God. What doubt can there be? God the Holy Spirit caresses us in the heart of our very being. Can there be any doubt there? No, for then we know and feel completely confident that God is the Father, and that we are children of God. No one servants, no one slaves, but rather the children of God. O Lord God, Holy Spirit, come abide in us and remain with us as a witness of the Trinity and the Kingdom, as a witness of the immortal paradise. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen. This video was created by John and Catherine. Thank you and God bless.